Well, we're in Canada, but we're lost. And we just ran out of gas. We think Taylor knows where we're at, but he's not saying. The good thing is we just had shore lunch, so we're probably good for the next four hours. But after that, we're gonna draw straws, see who gets eaten first. But I'm in charge of the straws, so I don't think it's gonna be me. <laughs> Let's go fishing. At River Air in Kenora, the water has been like this for six weeks, flooding their docks and a couple of their buildings, but they're used to working on the water, obviously, so the caravan there is the plane that we took, and they're loading it up with supplies in order to take up to Maynard Lake Lodge, which is our destination, and we're getting ready for an awesome flight. This is Dan, Sean, and Chris on the plane with me, and it's about a 25 minute flight up to the lodge. Are you taking my picture? I am. You're in public domain, so you I've been fortunate enough to fly on float planes okay. just a couple times, and this time was spectacular. Our pilot was not only very focused and professional, but okay, also you. personable and interactive, and um, you know, laughed with us just a little bit, but then explained a few things as we were going up, and fortunately for everybody, he did need me to grab that right control. Once we got off the water, it was a really smooth flight all the way up. Anybody that's been to Canada knows how beautiful it is when you see these uh, islands all over the place. and. It's really interesting because everybody up here has a boat, a lot of them have float planes and to see how they adapt to the weather up here and just part of the year when they have open water is really interesting. Once we land we are met at the dock by Josh and Kayla and all the guides and the staff. The very friendly hospitality started as soon as we got off the plane. The pilot just jumped. <laughs> Everybody put their parachute on. You don't need me to help you fly, right? That's why, no, I'm all that's right. That's not why you have all these knives laying around. <laughs> this was right after the first morning of fishing, and it's time for our first shore lunch, and Marlon's sitting here cutting up fish right as they're coming off the boat, and uh, he's done this 12 million times, so he knows exactly what he's doing. Marlon was a great guide the entire trip. Taylor, who was the guide that I had that actual morning, brought some of the fish up that we caught and uh, everybody's showing up randomly and getting ready for our group of about 11 or 12 people. Lunch in Canada does not get any better than this. The mushroom, bacon, potatoes. No, onion. onion. Potatoes haven't hit there yet. Give us a little fry first. And aromatize some of the spice wow. for the flavor. Jerry did this every day we were up there and has done enough to where it's yes, perfection. <laughs> it's awesome. I said when the horn blows. The flays are already getting breaded by Bree, and Bree was a huge help. She also took care of us whenever we ate at the Lake Lodge and for breakfast. <laughs> this is what that same skillet looks like once the potatoes are added. And then Josh, the owner of Mater Lake Lodge, deep fries all of the fish and they taste as good as they look. The coolers are full of your favorite beverage and you can't beat a lunch spot that looks like this. Grab the small net, Taylor. <laughs> I said, Taylor, you want me to hand you a small net? What a guy. It's all about getting in the head of your enemy. <laughs> the harassment that goes on up here back and forth is, is a lot doing? of the fun that we have. And on the first day, caught this 28 and 3 quarter inch walleye. That was my best catch. Maynard Lake is a big body of water, so you spend a lot of time in the boats going from point A to point B. And the boats are really good condition, strong engines, and the guides take very good care of them. There's always something to look out when you're cruising around the boat. And even 
as long as you had your wet weather gear, uh, the days were still enjoyable when it rained, and it did rain just about every day. Here's Taylor, our guide for the first day, and uh, he's from a town of 200 people, but put us on some really nice walleye that day. Matter of fact, that was the day I got my biggest walleye. But this isn't it. This is Dan's. And for the next two days, I got to fish with Marlon. I think Chris that day was catching the northern. And here's Chris. I fished with Chris for many years, and this is going to be our last fishing trip together. I'm going to miss her. She's always a great fishing partner. Good conversation in the boat. And when the water is calm up there, it's really calm, which makes for a great boat ride. I'll get Tom. Tom and his catch. We caught a lot of fish with Marlin, but what was really special while we were with nice. him is this coming up and that's an eagle coming down and taking a fish out of the water and that's worth a second look I'm gonna try to slow it down for you this time That is almost worth the entire trip for me. <laughs> so we got a center part. Nice fish. Ooh, Jake just fell right up. The guides up here, they know right away what type of fisherman you are. And if you like to laugh and engage, then you're going to laugh hard the entire day and have great conversation. And if you want to fish hard, they're going to leave you alone and just try to put you on those spots for whatever type of fish that you're trying to catch. Marlin but Marlin there. was always fun to be around. Not a way, we caught a lot of fish over the three days and that was only really exceeded by the hospitality that Josh and Kaylee and their entire staff them, gave mm -hmm. us and they fed us like kings. But in the end, this is the morning it was time to leave as the new group was coming on. And it was time to head out on the plane. Right, you suck at your job. Right here. If somebody says, oh shit, I'll get the toilet paper out. And just like we were fortunate that I didn't fly us in, we were fortunate that Don didn't fly us out.